Hello and welcome to Duck Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to look at shapes of molecules and we're going to be looking at electron pairs and basic shapes. So by the end of this lesson you should be able to work out the number of bonding pairs and lone pairs of electrons around an atom and then use electron pair repulsion theory to predict the shape and angle of a molecule and finally draw the shape of some basic molecules. The first thing we have to be able to do then is to calculate the number of electron pairs around the central atom. And to do that we use the following steps. So step number one is to find out the number of electrons in the outer shell of the central atom, which is the same as the group number. We're then going to add to this one electron for each covalent bond. And then we're going to, if it's an ion, add one electron for every negative charge. And we're going to subtract one electron for every positive charge. If there are any double bonds we're going to subtract two from the total number and if there's any triple bonds we're going to subtract four. Finally we're going to divide our answer by two. The final shape then is deciphered from the total number of electron pairs and the shape adopted is the one which keeps repulsive forces to a minimum. Let's do some examples then, and let's look at beryllium chloride. Beryllium is in group 2, so we, to count our electrons, we have two electrons for group 2. We have two covalent bonds to chlorine, so we have 1 and 1. So our total electrons is 4, and so our number of electron pairs is 4 divided by 2, so we have two pairs of electrons. And both of these in this example are both bonding pairs of electrons. We'll see how this determines the shape now. The electron pairs then will try and get as far away from each other as possible. And the furthest that two electron pairs can get away from a central atom is 180 degrees. So with two bonding pairs of electrons we end up with a molecule which is linear and we have a bond angle of 180 degrees. Finally then to draw beryllium chloride we have the beryllium in the middle a single line and a single line to show it's planar. Okay let's have a look at our next example. Boron then is in group 3 so it has 3 electrons it has three covalent bonds, each with one fluorine atom. So we have three more to add, giving us a total of six pairs of electrons. If we divide by two, we end up with three bonding pairs of electrons. And importantly, we have zero lone pairs of electrons. So our BF3 then has importantly three bonding pairs of electrons and that gives rise to a shape where the electrons will get as far away as possible giving a bond angle of 120 degrees and we name this shape trigonal planar that's because all the atoms are in a single plane to finish with then we draw the molecule by having a boron in the center, we have single lines coming away from this, and we draw our fluorine with bond angles approximately 120 degrees away from each other. Methane is our next example, which is tetrahedral, as we'll see in a moment. And for the carbon, which is our central atom, we have four electrons in the outer shell of the carbon. We have four hydrogen atoms forming covalent bonds which gives us eight electrons in total if we divide this value by two we end up with four pairs of electrons and in this instance all of those are bonding pairs of electrons and zero lone pairs our methane CH4 then has four bonding pairs of electrons and that gives rise to a shape which is tetra 
polyhedral is the four pairs of electrons try and get as far away from each other as possible. And to draw this, we have the carbon in the middle. We have our single line going up, our line going to the right. Notice it's not 90 degrees. Our wedge, which describes atoms coming towards us, and our dash, which describes atoms going away. Our bond angle for each of these, for a tetrahedral shape, is 109.5 degrees. PCl5 then, the phosphorus has got five electrons in its outer shell, five covalent bonds with chlorine, which gives it a total of ten electrons, which means we've got five pairs of electrons, and all of these are bonding pairs of electrons again. We have zero lone pairs of electrons. Five bonding pairs of electrons then gives us a shape which is trigonal bipyramidal, where the central phosphorus atom has the five chlorines around it, and we have two different bond angles which we'll talk about in a minute. To draw this molecule, we have the phosphorus in the centre, we have the chlorines that are in the plane which go up, down and to the right. We then have a wedge coming out towards us and a dash going away from us. I'll show you now the different orientation for the different bond angles. The first bond angle to note is that between these we get a bond angle of 190 degrees and if we spin the molecule round we get 120 degrees between those which are in a trigonal planar position. I'll show you a picture of that just to show you what I mean. So viewing from the top angle we can see that we then have bond angles of 120 degrees which are in that trigonal plane but we're still looking at something which is trigonal bipyramidal. Our final example today then is sulfur hexafluoride. The sulfur atom here being in group 6, so there's six, six electrons in its outer shell. It's got six atoms which are covalently bonding so we have a total of 12 electrons Divide through by two gives us six bonding pairs of electrons again, and once again, zero lone pairs. Six bonding pairs of electrons then gives us a shape which is octahedral, and I've removed the bond angles here because they're a bit difficult to see if we get all of them, but the bond angle in each case here is 90 degrees. And we draw this for SF6 with sulphur in the center. We go up and down with our solid lines. We then have two pointing away, like so. And we have two wedges coming towards us. Each bond angle there being 90 degrees. So just quickly to recap then, you work out the shape by first of all calculating the numbers of electron pairs around the central atom and then the shape here is based on the pairs of electrons and importantly the bonding pairs of electrons and next time we'll see how lone pairs and charges will affect the shapes of these molecules. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.